going down to the hold area or oh. all the way to the, fr all the, way to the front to the anchor. If they got the long poles on the side of the ship, and put eight men on this capstan that can raise and lower over 2,000 pounds. No, and that's it. Well, step on it, would you? No. Uh, this had been a cargo ship for three years, so it served its purpose on the, as it was the equation. <coughs> over here would have been a bosun seat in case they had to access the outside to maintenance the ship. They would lower themselves down on this little swing, work on the outside of the ship, and then raise themselves up. It's actual size, which is really about the size of the sailors. Did you step on him? No, yeah. No, yeah. Sewing kit, every sailor had to know how to sew. Um, this item here would have been a thimble. And it goes in the palm of your hand instead of on your fingers or thumbs. That way they could jam the needle through canvas. Oh, um, That's a <laughs> Yeah, kind of. They would keep their needles in a horn of beeswax so that they didn't rust. They would also run their thread through beeswax floss versus actual thread. So it would make it more durable through the canvas. Now our next stop is going to be up. We're going up this time. <laughs> that's just a side cannon in case they ran into more enemies and pirates. They don't climb on anything. And the black ropes on the sides are called shrouds. Any rope that was not operable on board the ship was a shroud. They're black because they're tarred, tarred to keep them waterproof. Um, it was their only way to access the main top, where the ladder rungs on the shrouds. The ladder rungs were called ratlins. They would position themselves on whichever side the wind was blowing them towards the ship. And they would climb up in order to access a free-flowing Jacob's ladder. And then they would throw themselves into the basket. Um, visibility from the main top wasn't much better than either castle on board the ship, so it was more torture to have to go up there than it was a treat for our kids find it. So, so this was also bless you, the bathroom level. In order for the sailors to access the bathroom, they would have to climb overboard, holding onto the shrouds. And there's a little platform that's about one foot wide by one foot long. Oh. See down there? Oh. Right there? Oh. That was their that's their potty. They would climb overboard, do whatever business they had to do in the ocean. And then this was their version of Charmin. This is the bitter end. It's yeah. nothing but frayed rope. Yeah. But it's the to closest thing they the had to ocean. hygiene on board the ship. Um, they didn't have shampoo, they didn't have soap, deodorant, toothbrush, toothpaste. All they had was the bitter end for a clean behind, so that's as clean as they got. Uh-huh, you can throw it. All right. Did they use something like that to catch rainwater? They tried to catch rainwater, but a lot of times the water was gushing over to the point where it, it was kind of useless in order to, they, I don't think they even bothered to bring the barrels up this high for the, the water barrels. Oh, what did they do? Um, those help raise the big sail. Uh, how do you make a barrel? Well, those are here. No, we're not allowed up on those levels. These raise the big sail. We used to take our tours up there, but it took forever to get them back down. And there's really nothing up there. But this item over here is the size of the capstan that was on the Nina and the Penta. Remember the size of the capstan that was downstairs that they used on here? This was the size that they used on the Nina and the Penta. That's how much smaller of a ship they were. It's also called a windlass. They would use that in case there was no wind in order to get the sails up. They would walk them up with this windlass. Mama.
the navigation level, it's a stern castle on the back of the ship. It's just the tallest level on the rear of the ship. On the front, it's the forecastle. It's a lot of rigging up there. Runs all back and forth. That's some more ropes that help raise this sail. I said no. We didn't do the cabin yet. We gotta go in there. Well, I didn't tell you about in there. There's pins that go to town wood. There's pins that what? Why the why is this so crooked? It's crooked so that when water gets on here, it runs off as fast as it can. Because when people would slip off. Right. They had to have leather bottom shoes. They couldn't wear shoes like we wear now. They had to wear like moccasins, kind of like the Indians wore. That's the pins that they used to write with. They were feathers. They would put a point on the end and they would dip it in ink and then write. He just brought some trinket bottles to, in order to share with the natives. Um, he was looking for spices, which were expensive, and islands of gold. But since he never did find China and Japan, he never found the spices he was looking for. Um, what he got sent home with was some food and clothes and big dead leaves, which were the first writings of tobacco in Spain. Um, also, when he landed, he had at least one pig left on board because he introduced pork to the new world. So, yep, that's a wooden spoon. That's what they all ate with. Christopher got to use china versus the little leather cup out of the water barrel. Um, he didn't have to share with everybody else. He also didn't have to climb overboard in order to access the restroom. This would have been a urinal, and his cabin boy would have emptied it for him. That way he didn't have to risk life or limb. And the, the ship always had its captain. This item here is called an astrolab. This is what he used to navigate with. It would hang out on the main, and he would use this with the North Star or the Sun. He would use these two little side holes to sight either one of them in, and wherever the arrow pointed would give him his degree of latitude. They only navigated using latitude in 1492. We're in the country of, that's the state. We're in North America. But this, they didn't use longitude for a couple hundred more years. But you're in the city of Columbus, the state of Ohio, the country of the United States, they also used compasses back then. Um, we use them now with a pencil that's attached. He couldn't do that with his dipping and everything into the ink. But we still use the same technology. You have to dip it in the ink in there. You have to pretend. They had lanterns. They would hang these from the flagpole on the stern castle at night so that um, the ships wouldn't run into each other and they could follow where each one of them has been. Um, Christopher was more afraid of somebody taking off without him versus them running into him <laughs> he, because he wanted to be the first one to spot land. What are these but, for? Um, somebody was doing maintenance up here. I'll take those, please. Take them down the stairs. Um, but his bed was raised. He had locked storage underneath so he could lock up his journals so he didn't have to share all of his information. Can we look at it? Hold it up. Yeah, okay. Um, and watch your fingers when you close the door because it swings. Um, his bed was dressed in red, the color of nobility, but at night when he got in and pulled his curtains, that was the only privacy on board the ship. Uh, um, is what this, called it this is, they use this to navigate with. It's called a quadrant. It's one of four. Um, they would aim this up to the sun, and wherever this plumb box fell, would give you the degree of latitude. It was just as accurate as the Astrolab, but the sailors preferred to use this one, and Christopher pre preferred to use the yellow one. Because uh, it was newer. Uh, 